Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash Joshua and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Joshua Ellis. I am your host as usual, and obviously, welcome back to the show. Today's episode 115 of the show, and before we get started, we're going to do a bit of house cleaning real quick because, well, we always do house cleaning anyway, so it's like, like you guys already know we're going to do it anyway, so can't really tell you much. Um, like, I, first off, I want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening, uh, whether you're listening to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, wherever you listen to your podcast or you're watching the video version on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that you guys come back and listen and or watch the video and, you know, let me know what you guys think about it, because obviously these discussions and topics are chosen by you guys. Like, I don't really pick them like I can pick the topics that I want to see what gets posted on the poll. But you guys are ultimately the ones that pick what do I talk about, you know, because you guys are the ones that want me to talk about this stuff. And again, as I mentioned, you guys can follow me on my Instagram page at so mungi um that you guys can go there and you know follow the page or just follow me on instagram so you guys got to get access to the polls so that you guys can let me know you know what topics do you want to talk about or which topics do you want me to cover like you can send me direct messages and ask hey can we talk can you talk about this because this is something i think would be interesting to talk about and get your perspective on and it's ironically enough because that's what happened today but continuing with the house cleaning um, obviously I want to thank the Patreon backers for coming back and listening. It really means a lot to me that you guys keep coming back and listening and well, you guys keep supporting the show. Like you guys are active listeners and you're also supporting the show financially. Granted, it's only one backer, but he listens to the show regularly. So thank you very much for supporting the show. It really, really means a lot to me. I also want to say thank you guys. We're almost close to 1600 total downloads. So thank you guys so much for that. Like it really, really means a lot to me. Hopefully we can push 2000 by the end of the year. Hopefully. Um, that's going to be really fun and exciting. Um, but I also want to say like, thank you guys for the support for this week's episode. I know this week's episode was really fun to talk about. It was, I'm mainly referring to Wednesdays because yes, it was talking about a lot of people taking a lot of subjective opinions and trying to make them objective fact. And it's pretty much what's happening with this discussion too, which that's why I made it clear in that episode, which I'll put something up here so you guys can go watch it that it's very dangerous to talk about subjective opinions and say that they're objective fact. That's very dangerous to do because it is very, very dangerous and it comes off extremely ignorant. And so that's really a good segue into the topic, which we're going to be talking about the Canon R5 and R6 debacle. Now, what am I, what do I mean by that? So if you guys don't know, if you aren't camera people, I'm not a camera person. Like I have a camera. I learned how to use a DSLR and I'm learning how to do photography and, you know, videography, but Canon is one of the big camera manufacturers. Like I shoot on a Canon M6 Mark II. It's a more affordable option. It's a small compact mirrorless camera. And what Canon did was they came out with the Canon R5 and the R6. These are two big body mirrorless cameras from Canon. And so full frame. And they are really expensive. The R5 starts, well, its price without bundles, just for the body is like uh, 3,899 in US dollars. And then the R6 is, I think it's 20, I'd say like, hmm. I think it was around like $2,699, I think. Like I'll probably fact check that, but just keep in mind, it's under three grand. All this is US dollars, by the way. This is not including like bundles with lenses and everything. But yes, these are very impressive cameras. I'm not gonna go into the specs. Like I'll mention some of the specs because I'm not going to go down a whole list and just do that because people have already done that to death and you can go find actual people that know about cameras to talk about specs because I don't want to actually talk about specs. Granted, 
the R5 is the main talking point camera because it's the big AK full frame camera that's able to do AK raw internal. It's able to do 4K 120 frames per second. It's able to do like all these crazy. It has a 45 megapixel sensor. It's able to do 12 megapixels on electron, like 12 shots per second on, yeah, on electronic and then 20 or 20 on electronic, 12 on mechanical. Like I said, I don't really want to go into those details because like I said, that's not my place because I am more of a novice and I'd rather let actual professionals that know what they're talking about tell you about those specs and what they mean. And I'm going to be linking in the description below a video from Jared Poland talking about the situation because Jared actually had the same opinion as me. And I wanted to expand on it because Jared was getting a lot of heat. And that's what we're going to talk about is that this entire situation is it's funny, but it's also very dangerous because of what's being done. So what's happening? So what happened is there was rumors going around that the Canon R5 has bad overheating issues because there was a document floating around that wasn't confirmed by Canon that and people were getting mad because they're saying people are just ignoring these things that they're not like addressing the overheating thing that no professional would ever use us in a professional setting. And because yes, it does have crazy video specs. But one thing people also need to realize is that these cameras are also advertised as well, they have like they're mainly used for photography. They're not they have great video specs. And I think that's what Canon should have done. And even Jared says the same thing that these cameras should have been like uh, advertised as stills cameras rather than, you know, video cameras. I think that was a better call, like because then when you do photography and we'll actually explain why that was actually it should have been done that way, because then it would have made things a little bit more easy. It may have made things easier to explain. But what happened is is that Canon released a camera without a fan. So the R5 doesn't have a fan inside of it. And some people were getting mad that you had all these reviews from Canon ambassadors not talking about the overheating and they were saying Peter McKinnon, if you guys don't know who that is, you can go look him up. Peter McKinnon is one of the big camera YouTubers on YouTube and he shoots Canon. He's honest, he has a bias towards Canon. He only likes shooting Canon and he's a Canon ambassador and he got like pre-production models early. Keep that in mind, these were pre-production models. And in, in Peter's video, he not only mentioned that, yes, he was given the camera by Canon early and that he mentioned the overheating issue. He mentioned that, yes, while shooting 4K 120 and some 8K, it would overheat sometimes. He would get the warning. And people were questioning. They were saying, like, Peter can't have credibility in this matter because he didn't say that there was overheating when he clearly said it in the video. And it's right there like you can't say he didn't say it because it's right there in his video and it's causing a lot of issues because it's leading to people saying that these people aren't credible that they're just they're just canon fanboys that they're just taking canon's money that they're getting paid off to just suck off canon and it's just not true and jared addressed this in his video and he was honest he's like look i didn't get paid by canon i made sure that i was doing a preview and that's why he even said like my video is a preview not a review because i did not get a camera early i didn't i was just talking about the specs and sharing my opinions on the specs that's it and later canon came out and shared the document and i i don't really want to talk about it mainly because i rather let jared talk about it because jared is more informed on the topic than me but that's what i'm saying the video i'm going to link to is going to have that picture where it goes over like the overheating stuff. But yes, Canon has said, yes, this Canon, this camera can overheat if, you know, not using the proper temperatures. It says room temperature, so it's like 73 degrees Fahrenheit and, or 23 degrees Celsius if you guys only use that metrics or that system, you know. Uh, and it's interesting to me because Jared addressed in one of his videos that there was a comment of somebody saying, I don't see any professional videographer or uh wedding photographer or wedding videographer use this as a professional camera because of the overheating and i'm like well you don't know that like you don't know because no one's used it for that matter like you can't just say that your subjective opinion 
is objective fact that your speculation is fact because then you're coming off as extremely ignorant you're coming off as somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about and that's extremely dangerous because when you try to push a subjective opinions as objective fact it is extremely dangerous because if you are somebody with large influence large following this can cause a lot of issues and it's crazy because you see a lot of people just bashing canon like oh canon did it again ha 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 like okay like you have to keep in mind these cameras are primarily for photography and it makes sense because that was a mistake on canon's part that they advertise these things as video cameras first when they're not they're stills cameras like these are not video cameras these are stills and they're really great still cameras granted they're referring to the r5 not the r6 so you know granted like i said is it's because of the ak video because the r6 does not have the ak video or 4k 120 it's just 4k 60 max and smaller sensor so i don't really see that overheating at all like that's going to be perfectly fine but it's interesting though that people are complaining about it's very very interesting and it bugs me a lot because it's like you see a lot of people just saying you can't use it in a professional setting you can't use it in a professional setting but then you have actual professionals come out and say well professional wedding photographers and videographers carry multiple cameras on them they're not just carrying one camera and that's it like they have multiple cameras for a reason if something goes wrong if there's a card that goes wrong like they have multiple cameras and it's usually the same camera or maybe they have like different cameras for each different thing because like i said like there may be a camera with a lens that this person wants to use and they that's why they bring it with them or they just like having three of the same camera so in case like you know something goes wrong or they just want a quick switch then they just have backup because that's what happens in a professional setting is a professional setting is not only using one camera like if you look at tv show sets like people that have actually done professional productions on tv sets and movie sets they have come out and just been honest they're like look there's multiple cameras like there's always at least a couple like five to eight backups on set like there is not always just one camera like there's always a backup so if the speculation is true about the overheating, which Canon has, like I said, they have released an official form saying that, yes, if you use it above room temperature or using an average temperature, you're going to get this result. And it going above that temperature could lead to an overheating warning. It could doesn't mean it can, because a lot of things that people don't seem to realize is that these are pre-production models. These are not the final thing, because like I said, I know some people say you can't really fix it with firmware, but there are some things that can be fixed with firmware because that's what it's for is that's what happened with the canon r5 is like with when the canon r5 came out they sent people out to hawaii and all the reviewers that were there got pre-production cameras and they got to do hands-on with them but they made it very clear that these were pre-production cameras with pre-production software these were not final cameras these were pre-production models and it's funny because nobody has actually come out and done like with a full like actual final version of this camera like full-on final version and it's annoying because you see these people just going on and on and on about subjective opinions and saying that you can't use this why would anybody buy this trash and it's like okay like that's just an opinion it's not fact when it gets proven okay cool we can have a different discussion but right now it's subjective wait till the cameras come out because this doesn't just, this doesn't just apply to this camera this applies to every camera that comes out because like what's it called like jared in this case he was honest he's like look i can't be honest about something that i've never used before that i've never had in my hand and that's why he made it clear that his preview video was a preview because he was only talking about specs because he didn't get the cameras in person. Like, he didn't. And yes, even Peter McKinnon, who is a Canon ambassador, who supports the brand, who obviously shoots only on Canon, was honest even in a sponsored video that he even said there is overheating. He was honest. And to say that Canon doesn't acknowledge that there's an overheating problem when they literally made a document that acknowledges it can overheat then 
I don't know why you're saying they don't acknowledge it when they do. And they've made a document that's been, you know, that's been widely distributed and it's been given out. Like if they documented it and written down, then you can't say that they didn't address it because it's written down. It's actually there. And granted, even Jared said that the form that came out from Canon UK, he was waiting for confirmation that it was true. And then obviously later we found that it wasn't. That's obviously the video I'm going to be posting in the description. But it makes me sad because this constantly happens all the time because you always have people saying that, oh, like you only talk good about this brand because they're paying you or you're only like talking good about this product because they're paying you. And if you talk bad about them, like, oh, how much did the competition pay you? And it's like really annoying because it's like, look, there's a reason why people have integrity. They don't care if it's like they're getting like if they're getting paid like it'd be honest they're like hey we're getting paid this is a paid review and a lot of youtubers like i know the waveform podcast with mkbhd he recently had uh michael fisher mr mobile on there and he talked about credibility how michael doesn't you doesn't do paid reviews he never will because it is it tarnishes integrity his integrity it makes him unreliable because if he's getting paid you can't trust it He'll do sponsors like, you know, sponsors, but you get what I mean? It's like, he'll never take a paycheck from a company to review their product. He never will because that is integrity. And MKBC does the same thing. A lot of people do the same thing is they're not going to take a paycheck from a company to do a review because they don't want the company to have say on what happens in the review, what they talk, because it's going to be honest truth. It's going to be honest upfront. They have no reason to lie to you. They'll be upfront with you if they have a bias. And they'll say it and that's okay that's just natural because everybody has a bias towards something but being honest that you're not going to do a paid review that this is just you actually using it and you sharing your thoughts and opinions on it and if you have a bias against it they'll be honest and like hey this just isn't my bias but maybe or maybe this is my personal preference but maybe to you it might be so let me explain to you what i saw as good as this and maybe like i said is they make it clear that what they don't like, you might like it. And it's just, it baffles me so much because this is just peak ignorance. That's what's happening. It happens with the Xbox and Sony thing where people are like, oh, if you talk good about the next Xbox and that means your ex Microsoft is paying you off. Or if you talk good about the PS5, then that means you're just a Sony pony, you know? And it's like, <sighs> with these cameras, like, yes, these are very impressive cameras. Are they expensive cameras? Yes, because these are professional cameras. These are not meant for the average user. These are professional, high quality bodies that Canon needed after the R5 wasn't considered the best body because like I said, it it's primarily a stills camera. And even then as a stills camera, some people liked it, some people didn't because Canon, like I said, is they, pref they usually prefer to have stable, like reliable cameras they may not have the best specs, but they're always reliable and they're always going to do the job. And obviously Sony gives you a lot of great specs and, but there's obviously still some issues. That's being honest. Every camera has a flaw. Like there is no such thing as a perfect camera. Like there's just personal preference. What do you prefer using? What are you more comfortable with using? Because like I said, the equipment doesn't matter. It's the person that's actually using the equipment and what you're going to create. That's what's more important. You know, like it doesn't matter if you have the best equipment in a studio. If you're not gonna make good music, it doesn't matter. Cause you can have the best equipment, but your music could be trash, bro. Like, it doesn't matter. Same thing with an artist. They could have the greatest brushes in the world. They can have the greatest paints, the greatest canvases, and they don't paint anything good. The same thing happens with videographers. You can have the best camera, the best lenses. If you don't know what the heck you're doing, or like, or even like just thinking that you can just point and shoot and that you're gonna get something great, like that's just not true there it takes time it takes practice it takes consistency and it takes understanding like what you're comfortable with like understanding what's your flow like what do you like to do like you got what i'm saying like because everybody is creative like you can be creative and you're unique because everybody is unique not everyone's the same thing like you don't need to copy somebody else to do something good you can do your own thing and make it unique and it will be you People will see that it's you and they'll see it's authentic, that it's real. And they'll be like, okay, this is real. This isn't fake. He's not just copying someone or he's not following a trend. 
And I applaud Canon personally because they went out of their comfort zones and they gave people the specs. And it's funny because they gave people the specs they wanted and now people are complaining. You get what I'm saying? Like they gave you what you wanted and now you're going against them and now you're complaining. Like it's really annoying to me. It's really stupid. It really is. Like I'm just being objectively honest. It's really stupid. And you guys need to be very careful, especially because a lot of people wanted me to talk about this because there's people that watch me and or listen to my podcast and like, hey, I'm interested in if you talked about cameras, because that's something I like to talk about. That's a piece of technology that I enjoy. And people are interested in this camera. They really are, because Canon has sold out of these things already. Like it was pretty high in demand. And it really hurts when you see people that are really invested that they want to get this camera because that, like I said, Canon needed high end bodies to compete because the R5 for a lot of people just wasn't the best camera for them, but they liked the Canon glass because the R series glass or the R lenses or RF lenses are incredibly good. They're some of the best glass you can get on the market and Canon needed good bodies for them. And Sony on the other hand had good bodies, just not the best lenses, but Canon had the best lenses for some like most people say that they do canon does have the best lenses like objectively speaking and with the new bodies now they're able to use them and it's great and i think this is going to be a win like everybody wins in the end because like i said when canon or when any competition is being had the consumers win in the end that's what matters is that you as the consumer win because when one company pushes the envelope Everyone else will push the envelope. They'll strive for better and they'll strive to improve quality and they'll make things better. But this is a big step forward. And I applaud Canon for this because now they're going to push the industry forward and make, you know, the competition be like, hey, we need to step up our game because if we're not, we're going to get our cheeks clapped, bro. Like that's what's going to happen. And that's all really I have to say on the matter. I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode, but I hope you guys understand that do not take subjective opinions as fact weight them because this is an instance where nobody has really tested a final version of this camera this has not been used in a professional setting because you also have to keep in mind professional videos like that people that want to do professional videos using these in studios and everything are using them at room temperature and even then most professional shoots don't go longer than 20 minutes they probably go like five to ten at best because there's always stop restart stop re but you get what i mean like they never like there's never a professional shoot that's going to go the full distance because even then like i said there's always backups there's always more cameras you get what i'm saying like that's something that people need to realize is that professionals do not think the same way as consumers if you are not a professional you cannot say what a professional is going to do because you can't because you're not a professional like yes you can have educated questions but they're not fact like they're not you can't just say your question or your opinion is fact when it's not when you haven't actually like done anything and i just think look wait till the cameras come out give it a couple months for people to actually use these things in real world situations let actual like videographers use these let actual like photographers use these things because like i said these things are beast of stills cameras they're incredible for what they're able to do for video they can also do good video too like my question or i'd say my concerns for these cameras don't really lie in like the record limits and everything it really relies on how's the hdr you know how is it gonna look like i don't care how long this thing records i care about like how the footage looks you know that's what's more important because that's what you're getting like like that is the meat and potatoes granted i always say for video the most important thing is audio because that actually is true but you get what i'm saying guys like i'm not saying this like to i'm not saying this to be mean i'm not saying this to hurt anybody's feelings but i'm going to be honest with you guys is you have to be careful with stating that subjective opinions are fact because they're not they're subjective it's like my mentor always says is that opinions are like assholes everyone has one like it's not he's not wrong like we all have opinions that doesn't mean they're all right so take like i said please take this and as a sense of me saying hey guys be mindful of this stuff you know don't don't just jump on the hate bandwagon and just say cool like please like understand the look do the research wait till the camera comes out and if you're really interested in it buy it if you're not don't buy it it's your money you know 
Like you're, you have to do the research. That's your job because it's your money. You're supposed to be educated when you buy something because that's what you're supposed to do. Because then if not, then why are you buying it? Because then you're going to get buyer's remorse later. You'd rather be educated and know what you're getting into than not knowing what you get into and then you're screwed, you know? But I'm going to let you guys go with that. Thank you guys so much for coming back and listening. It really means a lot to me that you guys constantly keep downloading, you know, sharing the episodes, liking, disliking the episodes. It really, really means a lot to me. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. You know, obviously thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you're listening on Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, you know, like leave a review for the show. Let me know what you guys think. And obviously, like I said, you can follow me on my social medias. And so you can get access to the polls. So you guys can get involved in this stuff. But until then, I love you guys. Today. Please continue to be safe. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Take care of everyone around you. You know, be mindful, respectful of everyone around you guys because things are still weird out there. Like, please be safe. I love you guys to death and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time and I love you guys to death.